I think you all know it. Let's, this is Kaushik Duda. Yes. You can see by the name tags, Deborah van der Meer. Anastasia Pagnoni. My name is Ron Lee. And of course, we have Lulia. Uh, by the way, I was thinking of putting on a tie today, but I thought it might disorient Boo too much. <laughs> so I decided not, not to make any major changes at the last minute. I've known Boo. Actually, I met Vu by phone. We did this sort of phone calls when, um, when we were recruiting PhD students. I called him, and I think it was like 4 or 4 30 in the morning or 5. He knew I was going to call, but it was still. And we had a nice conversation, sort of ch checking out English and so forth. And he asked, me, he asked me then, is there anything I can read to get started? And I thought, there's an interesting article, and it was an article about the cost of entry, about how procedures are different in one country and another. Yeah. That was four and a half years ago. And today we have the answer. So <laughs> we stayed, and McGee and I have met like two hours a week during that entire time. So I know, we have, and we have stayed focused on that same theme all along. And so today is the results, and good luck. The protocol, as you know, most of you have been through this. Uh, Wu will make a presentation. It should be not longer than 45 minutes. We try to hold it the questions to be clarification questions. Um, but I, you know, if there's so the idea is to try to keep bunch the discussion questions until after that. And there's a we have a, a discussion. It's the it's it's primarily the committee members. It's the committee members that are challenging him today. So. The audience is welcome here, but I may, if you have a, a strong question, raise your hand. I'll see if we can fit it in, but it's primarily the, the committee members. And then, then comes the, the time when we ask the Boo to take the walk, which okay. means he goes outside, the other guests go outside, and then we have a private discussion by the committee, and we come up with a verdict, and then we announce the verdict. Okay? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to the committee member, especially uh, Professor Lee, my advisor. Uh, the person that guided me to this boring area, <laughs> I must say. Uh, thank you, Professor Anastasia from uh, Italy, Professor Sudong Heng. And thank you, all of the other committee members and my friends for your participation. Do we have the audio recorder? Uh, yeah. Where is it? I think it's oh, there it is. Okay. Right. The, uh, the topic of my dissertation is a deontic analysis of intergenerational control requirements. And uh, first of all, I think it's important to distinguish the notion of control here and the notion of control mentioned in computer science or cybernetics or <laughs> engineering, because maybe the topic is slightly different. The concept of control here is more about auditing control or organizational control. That means control against potential fraud in a procedure rather than control the flow of the process or the flow of the program in uh, traditional computer science or cybernetic control. My dissertation focuses on controls of interorganizational transactions. Underpinning most interorganizational transactions are the only relations, which are about rights and obligations of the participants. For instance, the purpose of a sale transaction is to ensure that the seller fulfills his obligation of deliver the good and the buyer fulfilled his obligation of payment. When all of the party trust his order, control may not be needed. However, in situations where the participant do not know or trust his order, they must rely on explicit control in order to reduce their exposure to the risk of opportunistic behavior by the counterparty. However, at present, there is no analytical approach or technique to uh, determine what control are needed for a given contracting or governance situation. And this research is the first step to work that direction. The objective of my research is to develop a formal method for deriving control requirement from the ontic process model. And what is the ontic process model? I, I hope you go through the concept by reading the dissertation. However, we will uh, revisit the concepts here. But instead of looking at the flows of document and data moving back and forth among different trading parties, we look at the underlying deontic purpose of the transaction and identify necessary control in order to secure the purposes. So by 
not looking at the surface level of the procedure, but look at the purpose of the procedure, what is the procedure for, and based on that, identify control the security purposes. The deliverable of the research includes the formal method for modeling the audit process and a set of control principle. The control principle will be used to derive the control requirement and a working prototype. Here I develop a working prototype in Formlock. The working prototype will check a DLT process model and certain domain knowledge as inputs to generate control requirement. And these control requirement may be considered as a kind of constraint on the documentary procedure. The documentary procedure needs to satisfy these requirements in order to secure the involved parties against potential fraud. So I organize the presentation that follow. The first session is about the motivation of the research. The second session presents a redesigned methodology based on the only process model. In the third session, I will state the objective of the research, identify challenges to achieve the objective. I will also briefly explain the solution. In the third session, I will present the results of the dissertation and uh, the validation of the result. Uh, finally, I summarize the main points of the dissertation and uh, portray several directions of future research. I also incorporate the two more sessions in the senior, a demonstration session, with it try to demonstrate the function of the program. And another session is an appendix, which contains some extra slides that may help you to answer, to address some of your questions. I will visit this slide just in case it's necessary. The main motivation for my dissertation is the redesign of inter-organizational procedure. So inter-organizational transaction typically involve a chain of interconnecting procedure. In the procedure, beside the main activity that collectively realize the main objective of the transaction, which are about the exchange of goods, services, or money among multiple parties. Many other activities are added into the procedure for control purposes. So gradually, this led to complicated procedure. The issue is how to redesign the procedure to improve efficiency without compromising or losing control. That is the main motivation for the research. Potential application may be redesign of trade procedure as in trade facilitation that I will uh, focus a little bit more detail in the next couple of the slide. And uh, another area may be streamlining bureaucracy if we build those kinds of thing at the redesign of government procedure. And another application may be the merger in acquisition of enterprises at the redesign of business or administrative procedure. So there are various kinds of applications that the research can uh, be used for. But now I focus on the domain that I like that is about trade facilitation. Look at trade facilitation. A typical trade procedure involves 30 parties and 40 different types of documents. This is trading of the normal or regular product, trading of chemical product, or biological product, or hazardous product, requiring much more than that. So the commercial procedure increase the transaction cost of international trade. A study showed that the transaction cost of international trade is from 2.5, 50% to <coughs> of trading value. And if you know that, the volume of trade value last year is more than $13 trillion. So just 1% or 2.5% is a huge, huge amount. Uh, there are several initiatives collectively known as trade facilitation and to simplify uh, the trade procedure and the policy related to international trade. And study also saw that trade facilitation could benefit from 1 to 5% of the trade value. And the saving on the simplification and harmonization of trade procedure alone is estimated to be about 300 billion euro. This figure is provided by the European uh, Communities on Trade. And by the way, by simplification of trade procedure, this is allowed uh, small and uh, small and medium enterprises access to the global market because now the complicated procedure and the high transaction cost is considered the main obstacle for in international trade. So by reducing the complicated of the procedure, we may have to increase the trade volume by getting the small 
and medium sized enterprises access to the global market. And through that, increased international trade about 